What's up guys, Scotty2Hockey here, aka The Average Hockey Fan once again, and I'd like to list my top 10 prospects in the Montreal Canadian system. I seen Craig Button's list the other day, and there are a few picks he had on his list that I did not agree with. It's not that I felt they didn't deserve to be in the top 10, it's just the order he had them in. So I decided to make the average hockey fan's opinion on what the top 10 prospects are for the Montreal Canadiens. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, don't forget to like, and feel free to comment uh, Feel free to comment if you agree or disagree with me or what your list is for the top 10 picks for the Montreal Canadiens. At number 1, I have Nick Suzuki, a dynamic young center out of the OHL who put up 100 points in 2017-2018 and then topped it off the next year by winning the OHL Playoff MVP leading Guelph to the championship. He was, also, he was also excellent in the Memorial Cup, despite his team falling short of winning the tournament. Suzuki is very creative, has excellent playmaking ability, an excellent shot, good skating and cycling in his own team zone, and his compete level along with the fact he's a power play specialist and a human highlight reel in the OHL makes him a top-tier young prospect. He's 19 years old, 5'11", 183 pounds, his position is center, He's on a three-year ELC with an $863,000 cap hit. He was drafted 13th by Vegas, but then traded to the Montreal Canadiens in the Pacioretty trade. Some of his numbers that really stood out for me this year in the OHL playoffs in 24 games played, he had 16 goals, 26 assists, and 42 points. Excellent numbers for Nick Suzuki, and he had 94 points in the regular season. Ryan Paling is my number two pick for the num for number two best prospect for the Montreal Canadiens. A solid defensive center who year by year is an aggressive forechecker who plays a relentless no-quit physical game at the college level. After struggling in his rookie season in the NCAA a bit, he found his game and got better year after year. And this year his offensive ability has really shown through with World Junior MVP status and scoring a hat-trick in his NHL debut. To me, he projects as a future number two center just behind the Spirit Kakiniemi, and he reminds me of Philip Deneau with a better offensive upside. He's 20 years old, 6'2", 183 pounds. His cap hit is $925,000, and in St. Cloud last year, in 36 games played, he had 31 points, and in the World Junior Tournament, in seven games played, he had five goals, three assists, eight points, was a plus five, and was the MVP. At number three, I have Caden Primu, an extremely talented, solid, and highly talented young offensive goalie prospect who Montreal stole with the 199th pick in the 2017 draft. In 2017 NHL draft, excuse me, he won the Mike Richter Award as a top goalie in NCAA Division I hockey. He led USA to a gold medal game, but they came up short and only won the silver medal, but he was solid the whole tournament despite that, and he also made the USA World Hockey Championship team. He's 19 years old, 6'3", 200 pounds, his cap hit is $880,000, he, he was drafted 199th overall, and in Northeastern University this year, in 36 games played, he had 25 goals, tennis, uh, 25 wins, excuse me, 10 losses, 1 overtime loss with a .933 save percentage and a 2.09 goals against. At number 4, the newest addition to the prospect pool, Cole Caulfield. The newest addition to the Habs top of their prospect pool, a dynamic young goal scoring offensive right winger out of the United States Development Program. He has a laser beam of a shot. Excellent speed, excellent stick handling, good creativity, and he plays with an edge and 100% effort every shift. Despite his small stature at just 5'7", 163 pounds, Caulfield shattered the goal record for the United States Development Program, the single season record with 72 goals. He also shattered uh, the overall goal record, which was 104 held by Phil Kessel with 126 goals. He's the all-time goals and points leader coming out of a program that has the likes of Phil Kessel, Austin Matthews, and Patrick Kane. One hell of a prospect for sure and could easily go higher on this list after next year. In the United States Development Program this year, in 64 games played, he had 72 goals, 28, point, 28 assists, 100 points, and in the World Junior Under-18s, he set a record for the United States program, uh, for a goal-scoring record for the United States team, with 14 goals in 7 games and 18 points overall. He's 5'7", 163 pounds, his position is right wing, he's 18 years old, and of course he's unsigned because he only got drafted a couple days ago. 
At number five, Alexander Romanov, an offensive-minded D-man with a great shot and really good skating ability. He doesn't wind up or forecast his shot, so it's hard for goalies and defenders to stop or block it as quickly as they would when they see it coming. For a smaller D-man, he is reliable defensively, but his offensive outs upside outshines his defensive abilities. I like his decision making and his poise on the ice for a defender of his age. I honestly think he could play in Montreal this year if he really wanted to, but Montreal would have to put in a lot of work to bring him over from the KHL, so I don't see it as a realistic thing happening this year. But here's the hope, and it does. He's 19 years old, 5'11", 185 pounds. He was drafted in the second round, number 38th overall. And in the World Junior Tournament this year, he was the top defender with one goal, seven assists, eight points in seven games, and he was a plus 12. At number six, I have Josh Brook, a very creative, offensively gifted defender who at times has shown the potential to be a great top four D-man someday in the NHL, but he struggles with consistency. And although he has become much more defensively sound and aware this past year, he still has some holes in his game. But I think a year, maybe two years in Laval, he should develop into a guy who can play in the big club someday. He was a second round draft pick, 56th overall. And for the Moose Jaw Warriors in 2018-2019, in 56 games played, 59 games played, excuse me, he had 16 goals, 59 assists, 75 points, and a very solid plus 24. At number seven, we have Jesse Yellenin, the son of former NHLer Ewa Yellenin, a player who had over 300 career NHL games. Jesse seems to be a chip off the old block and set to be an NHL player in the coming years. His, uh, his calling cards are playmaking ability and speed, just like his favorite player, Saka Kwabu. He works hard to be a solid all-around player in a league of men in Finland. He, he has good size, he has good speed, but he needs at least a year or two to get his defense up to par. He's American-born but spent most of his life in Finland. He's a former standout at the World Junior Under-18s alongside Jesperi Kakniemi and Kako Kako. This kid was born to play hockey, but it's hard to project what his future will be in Montreal. He's still unsigned and committed to SM Liga for another year, but I fully expect him to sign in 2020-2021. He's 19 years old, he's a right wing, he's 6 foot tall, 167 pounds, and he was drafted at 35th in the second round. At number 8, I have Joel Teasdale, a big body dominant left wing who really seen his stock boost this year as he helped lead his QMJHL Huskies team to a QMJHL championship where he won the MVP of the tournament. And then he led them to a Memorial Cup win after that. Um, he did not win the Memorial Cup MVP, but he had one hell of a tournament. He has a great two-way game and a very high compete level. Because his production and overall game in general flourished in the postseason for his team, where he came up big in big moments and always seemed to have the puck on a stick, he is a guy who could really surpass what was expected of him by scouts and experts. He's 20 years old, 6 foot tall, 203 pounds, his position is left wing, and he's currently on, he was undrafted. He got signed to a three-year ELC by Mark Bergevin in 2018, and his cap hit is $763,000. Number 9, Kale Fleury, a solid puck carrier with smooth skating ability. He's gifted offensively, but has solid de he's gifted offensively but has solid defense as well and a good hockey IQ. He possesses good size to play in the NHL one day. He just needs to get a little bit stronger on the puck and work on his skating with all the prospects we have and full and resigning. He may not get the chance to play in Montreal this year, but he had a very good rookie year in Laval. Despite the team not being very good, he was one of the better players. In 60 games played, he had 23 points, 9 goals, and 14 assists. He was a minus 16, though. He's 20 years old, shoots right, 6 foot 1. His position is right-handed defenseman, right-shot defenseman. He's 201 pounds, and his cap hit is $771,000. He was drafted in the third round at 87. And at number 10, last but not least in some people's opinion, the former captain and scoring leader of the Notre Dame NCAA team, he is an older prospect who has a ton of experience, Jake Evans. With four years of development in the, in the AHL after being drafted by Montreal Canadiens, or four years of development either in AHL or NCAA, I can't remember off the top of my head, guys. He is a shoot-first two-way center who can skate well and is solid defensively and has some offensive upside. Due to the fact Montreal has more promising uh, center prospects at his position 
and that he's a veteran player. He may not get to play in Montreal this year, but he does bring a lot. He does have a decent two-way game. He's strong on the puck, and uh, he's a pretty solid prospect. At number 10, he's not a bad prospect at all. For me, it was down to him or Otto Leskinen, and I look at what uh, Jake Evans has done in the AHL. On a team that's terrible, he's had some pretty good numbers for a 20-year-old player, and he was a standout in the NCAA. So this guy, in a couple of years, maybe even next year, could come into the NHL and be an effective player. He could also be trade bait for the Montreal Canadiens now that they have so much center depth in their prospect pool. Anyways, guys, it's just the average hockey fan's opinion. These are just my top 10 picks. You may agree with them. You may disagree with them. But of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to leave a comment. And if you want to, feel free to leave a list of who your top 10 prospects are in the Montreal Canadian system. I had a great time doing this, and I had a great time reviewing Montreal Canadiens prospects coming up to this draft. Look forward to my second round prospect picks videos coming up soon of uh, players the Montreal Canadiens picked in the second round of this year's draft. This is Scotty2Hockey, a.k.a. The Average Hockey Fan. Have a great day, folks.